Thanks for joining a couple of 90s kids. You're listening to Stuck in My Generation. Woo Tang! Woo Tang! Woo Woo Tang! I thought you said Poo Tang. You said Woo Tang. Pooty Tang. <laughs> Tang. You ever seen that movie, Pooty Tang? I didn't know that. God, what a trash ass movie that was. Who was it that? Oh man, it was like a. a it, it's funny that we're talking about Wu Tang because it was like a rip off of kung fu movies. It was like, actually, you know, if if you get good and drunk or something like that, you might want to watch there. Pootie Tang. Maybe okay. I need to give it a shot. I was young when I okay. watched Pootie Tang. Oh, so it's that old? Uh, probably pushing the year two thousand. Okay, I think. Somewhere okay. along those lines. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've probably watched uh, Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre, yeah. That movie sucks balls, in my opinion. Yeah. But it, th- this was a <laughs> old shoestring hicks over here. It was a yeah. uh, Pootie Tang, I kind of I kind of say, was the uh, kung fu version of Nacho Libre, maybe? No shit. Something, That's a kung something, fu movie. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a kung fu movie, and a, and a really, I think it was meant to intentionally be bad, and uh, they okay. pulled it off. They they pulled it off, but I, I may I may love it now. I mean, I, things change, people change. I was yeah. uh, I was too school too cool for school back then. So, oh yeah, it's very possible that things have changed. So, all right, I'm trying to share this damn. Uh, there we go. Share button. Share share right posts to the facebook of book face that way all of our glorious people can see that our biggest so, fans. great yeah, biggest fans all two of them welcome to stuck in my generation as you know i feel like we need to explain ourselves sometimes i got two things an explanation right. and our first hater stay tuned okay <laughs> good but yeah i know we it's have great. a hater we have a hater we have fucking made it so <laughs> first of all what we do here is we talk about bands we never gave the chance back in the day. We grew up on grunge and some other things, but for the most part, you know, we were late 80s kids when we started listening to music, 80s kids, and then the the grunge hits, and that kind of takes over more or less. There's other pieces to it, but more or less, there's a lot of bands we never gave the time of day, a lot of groups we never gave the time of day, and I think it's time to, to give them the time of day, as does Hicks. So we've talked about some of them. Some things have been great. Some things have been not so great, but I'll tell you one thing. We needed a break from the rock and roll music. Yes, we did. Man. Badly needed a break from rock and roll I in agree. a terrible way. And I didn't know how much I needed a break from the rock and roll until I, I put on Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. <laughs> until I put on <laughs> Wu-Tang. And, and, and I realized, you know, I, because of the lack of great rock music, Rap has kind of taken a a big, large chunk of my musical tastes in my yeah. later years of of u- music listening. Sure. Later, as in pushing forty. But uh, first hater, we had a. Uh, I knew it was coming. We had a <laughs> hater on YouTube <laughs> that was absolutely pissed the fuck off that we hated Dio and all those other singers of Black Sabbath. Oh, He's you're like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and that's that's fine. That's fine. That's perfectly but, fine. Perfectly fine. But you know, my my theory is, if I'm watching something, I'm like, this sucks. I'm like, click onto something that doesn't. Why people want to waste their time to comment on something they don't like? I don't. It, yeah, I I don't want to give anybody shit. Sure. I mean, a- anybody that's trying to create something or talk about something or spending their time doing anything. I don't want to tear them down unless they're storming the Capitol building. And I'll be like, that was a waste of time, brother. But (laughs) otherwise, you know, but it it was fun. I went back and forth with him. I even told him, thanks for giving us a chance, even though it turned out horrible for you. And he's like, you guys didn't even give reasoning as to why you didn't like those albums after Ozzy. I'm like, yeah, we did. (laughs) I can't stand them. (laughs) Can't do it. Neither can Hicks. Not a fan. Any, if I hear, if I hear one of the greatest rock and roll riffs of all time, and then I hear, I'm like (laughs) turning that shit off, man. It's just the music is a total package. If the vocals aren't up to snuff, or if they're completely in the opposite direction of what you like, fuck it. 
You know, I, I mean, I oh, still yeah. appreciate that stuff. I think he was mad because I said, and this album sucked. And then next album sucked. And then <laughs> next album sucked. <laughs> Listen to me, it sucked. I, I should be able to say something sucks. Like if my favorite football team sucks, I should be like that dolphin suck, which often they do. And here's the thing. If I disagree with somebody, that doesn't mean I hate you. It means mm. I just don't like it. You know, some people don't like asparagus. It's simple, man. I like the asparagus. If you don't eat asparagus, I don't hate your ass because you don't eat asparagus. That's just I don't know if I eat. like it or not, to be honest with you. I have no sure. idea if yeah. I like asparagus. Yeah. No clue. I'm going to have to find out now. Sure. And but, if, if you don't like it, I'm not going to hate your ass. I'm going to be like, Barker doesn't like asparagus. I'm locking my doors if I don't like it. I'll be like, <laughs> just gonna by, drive by asparagus. <laughs> yeah. But, man... Yeah, I, I mean, there's always haters. YouTube oh, brings yeah. the haters, and it was a comment on a YouTube video, so no big deal. I'm yeah. glad he listened long enough to find out that we hated Dio. Sure, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. So anyways, Wu-Tang Clan, our first rap group. If you thought this whole show was about rock, you were wrong. Wrong. You were wrong. We can't listen to rock all the time. Maybe when we were in our 20s, sure, but times have changed. Yeah. Yeah. And the Wu-Tang Clan is here. So, Hicks, first off, what is your experience with Wu-Tang? Wu-Tang, other than a t-shirt sold at Journeys. Nice. Uh, man, no, I don't own it. I see it all the time in the window at Journeys. Oh, okay, okay. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm a huge fan of rap and hip-hop. Same. Uh, Wu Tang, and, and I didn't think that was possible until like the last ten years, probably. Okay, so I man, wasn't back in the day. Wasn't back in the day, man. I tell you, I, I was, you know, uh, Run DMC back in the eighties. Yeah, you know, I was big into Run DMC. Uh, I could go on and on and on. I have a whole list right here of oh, non name them. Arts. Okay. Man, I'll tell you what, Dr. Dre, The Chronic, one of my top 10 favorite albums of all my time. My wife loves that one. I, and I, I do too. It. I listened my to rap back it. then. Yeah. I just, I, I wasn't, you know, it was way behind rock. Sure. I understand that. Before that, stepping back even farther, Public Enemy. When I loved came, Public Enemy. Love Public Enemy. Yep. Uh, NWA, when they came out, man, I was buying the NWA albums, the Easy E albums. To step back even farther, the Run DMC shit. Man, I was down with Run DMC when I was just a just a kid. You know, yeah. love that shit. Um, See, I I didn't listen to Run DMC or NWA that much. Like for some reason, Public Enemy hit me the right way, and LL Cool J. I had one like his oh. earliest albums. It was good shit back then. Good but, shit. I listened to yeah. LL Cool J's first album the other day. It's good. And I think Rick Rubin, I'm going to throw the Rick Rubin card out there again. I think he was kind of uh, in the scene with LL Cool J trying to get pushed in to get started, you know? That sounds right. That sounds right. Uh, man, that first album is go back and revisit that album, please. The I unbad. will. Maybe we do an LL Cool J episode. I don't know. I, I liked LL Cool J back in the day. I had a 45 minute drive the other day to a, a automotive dealership, uh, threw on that first LL Cool J album. I was wooed out through that <laughs> on yeah. and man, it was just, I thought, Oh my gosh, there's like three or four songs on there. I thought, Oh, this shit is so good. I yep. love it. I um, remember I went on the sixth grade and, and you folks from Jackson uh, will relate, uh, went on the Washington DC trip. And I remember having the LL cool J cassette. I'm bad. That's it. And, 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 and I was just like, I wore that thing out. That's it. Wore it out. Is that the first one? I thought it was the second for some reason. Forget Oreos eat cool J cookies. <laughs> 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 it was, that might a good be album. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that. That might be the second. I don't know. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll add some names in there, like Public Enemy and LL Cool J. I was in on NWA for some reason. I didn't. I'm sure I would have liked it, but I just didn't listen to it. Yeah. Uh, Dead Prez. That was a little after those bands, but I was into Dead okay. Prez. Okay. You know what else I didn't listen to that might that? be uh, needing an episode? Beastie Boys. Oh, man. The only album I ever listened to was the one with Intergalactic on it. I never heard any of the other ones. I was the very first album wore that shit out. Um, 
I found so within the last, I don't know, three or four years, I found so many Beastie Boy albums, yeah. not albums, songs that I had no idea that existed that I kind of threw on a playlist. Yeah. And man, I feel that there's so much shit that's hiding that's that I haven't discovered yet. That might be a good one to to plug might, into. Uh, might be. You know, queue up. Yeah. Now, with if, the warning, uh, you were talking about the Beasties having tons of other music. Wu Tang has a shit ton of music if you want to dive into each one of those careers. But we're just doing the studio albums, the seven studio albums. We're not doing the Killer Bees. We're not doing Wu Tang presents this and Wu Tang presents that and Wu Tang presents Ronnie James Dio with Black Sabbath. We're not doing <laughs> any of that. We're just doing Wu Tang. But uh, as far as the history, my history with with hip hop goes. Besides Public Enemy and those groups, like you know Eminem brought me in further. DMX yeah. brought me in further. Uh, early Kanye brought me in even further. Early Kanye. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, geez, there's, there's others, there's others, but you know, it's, it's definitely became a large part of my listening experience, but I never really listened to the woo much. I knew me neither, uh, protect your neck. I knew gravel pit. I knew, um, Wu-Tang Clan is, is, is Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to F with one of the songs? That's just a lyric, I think. Okay. I, and I, I've heard a sprinkling of other songs, but had I ever listened to a full Wu album, the answer would be no. Have you listened to a full Wu album before this experience? No, I have not. Hey, I hey. Did, I didn't really know anything beyond the <laughs> uh, cream cash rules, everything around me. Yeah. I, I think I had heard that one too, but yeah. yeah, me neither. I mean, I, you know, I liked, I've even watched interviews with Riza. Uh, I've purchased old dirty bastard albums or at least one, yeah. uh, you know, there, there's, I have ties to the woo, but yeah. I never listened to a woo album. So looks like our experience is the same. Yeah. So we can jump right into sure. 36 chambers. 36 Enter the chambers. Woo -tang. Sure. What'd you think? At I, I looked at the, the release date of this album and as 1993, that is correct. And instantly thought nobody sounded like this then mm -hmm. like NWA was similar. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause there, I was going to say Wu Tang seemed to be the first to bring a hard edge to rap. That's not true. Yeah. Like I think that was NWA, possibly a few others. But still, no one sounded quite like Wu Tang in '93. So, with that in mind, when I looked at that and I, I saw '93, and then mm -hmm. I listened to "Bring the Ruckus," which was uh, you don't listen, you don't hear rap artists back in the early '90s mm -hmm. putting freestyle onto a studio album, but "Bring the Ruckus" was freestyle as shit sounding, like it was just initially i'm like this shit is raw and yeah. this shit is edgy like i i was sucked in by bring the ruckus immediately okay good good uh my first reaction i thought this shit sucks <laughs> <laughs> i thought this is torture <laughs> i'm gonna offend a lot of people and i'm sorry it's hey listen you got it we have to be honest with ourselves in this but i thought these these guys no disrespect. These guys, it sounded like somebody put a, a fucking sock over a microphone. <laughs> the production quality was pretty shitty. It was horrible. <laughs> and I thought, this shit sucks. I thought, what am I? I loved it. I loved Bring the Ruckus. We'll get. We'll go on from there after and you. I completely you respect your opinion. And I, I yours because, you know, it's just sometimes stuff just like. I've said it on our reaction channel that me and the other guys have done. I can't stay in mumble rap. So any kind of new rap, I don't like, you know, I don't hide my feelings about it. I'm just like, if you ask me, it sucks ass. You know, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Listen, we should have the right to be able to say something sucks. It's not a disrespect to the artist. We respect anyone sure. who puts their names out there and like puts themselves out there. You remember doing a stead if it's back in the day, how fucking nerve wracking was that? Oh my God. You know, Explain that to people who have never participated in exactly. Like so, like Wu Tang's doing an aesthetic fit on this album, and and you know, no disrespect, but some people are going to love it. Some people are not. 
So, you, so the first song comes on, and you you thought this sucks. What happened after that? And man, it, just, did anything happen after that? I just kept going, and I was looking for hooks. Okay, I, I want to hear some hooks. I didn't hear any hooks. The thing I liked about him was no hooks. I like yeah. I I love the freestyle, and total just were ten dudes or maybe nine. I can't remember now. Yeah, but like we're just going. I, I feel like they went into the studio, hopped on the mic, told the drummer because something I want to point out initially, like through their first like five albums, they weren't using any kind of effects. It was boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I mean they just they used drums way longer than any rap group I know of. Yeah, that started in the nineties forward. So like to me, it was like punk rap. So okay. I was digging it because I, I looked at it as punk rap and it was total freestyle. That's and a good point. Every one of those guys sounded pissed off on this album, mm -hmm. which will play a part later. I was pissed too. <laughs> <laughs> Wooed out, son. Wooed out. Yeah. So was there any songs that, that caught you at all or even gave like nostalgic feelings? None. <laughs> Not even cream? No, I wasn't digging it. You know? Yeah. Like I said in the previous episodes, I continuously search for that high. I need that yep. musical high. This is my drug of choice. I need this music to kick my ass. And I listened to this first album, and I jumped into some Easy e <laughs> and Public Enemy and LL Cool J to get this shit off of my mind. No disrespect <laughs> to the artist. No disrespect for the people who are diehard fans, I respect that. I understand yeah, that. Yeah. Listen. But this stuff, I don't need, I'm sorry for calling it shit. Because but, but if it is to you, it is to you. And, and there's, you, you were, you, you can still respect it and call it shit. That's what drives me nuts about people now. Like, dude, anyone that says you shouldn't say they suck, guarantee if you get in a car and you listen to something you don't like, you'll be like, this sucks and turn it off. That's you just don't want to say it out loud. Like, why not say it out loud? Like I, you know, it doesn't mean whatever we digress. We should be able to say it, if we don't like something in, in a, in a slightly harsh way, because some stuff does piss me off. Mighty, mighty boss tones said it multiple times. I hear them. I want to stab people. I want to go all <laughs> ICP and like, <laughs> I just, it just makes me angry. So sure. I, I'm feeling the anger off you. And I'm so glad you're not just, swaying with me on it like yeah I'm, I'm release not. the evil little nikki I'm, I'm, release I'm it <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just man i was looking for those hooks and i was the muffled vocals they and, were muffled as hell yeah and i thought man this i thought these guys need some direction they need some barker microphone setup slash gear they just they needed some direction and i Man, I was just, I was ready to, I was ready to move on after yep. this album. Fair enough. I'll, I'll give yeah. my thoughts here on some of the songs. Bring the ruckus. I thought was, I love the freestyle sound of it. It didn't catch me. It just mm -hmm. hit me. And I, and, and I was like, I, I like what they're doing because it's unconventional. Mm -hmm. uh, shame on a classic song to me. I apparently knew that one. Uh, Clayin' into front. Have that as filler. Uh, okay. Seventh chamber. I thought it was dark, had great rhythm. ODB uh, makes some great switch ups in that song. Fluff, uh, can it mm -hmm. all be so simple? I'm not sure what that note meant. But then I got stars, stars by The Mystery of Chess Boxing. The flow on that brought me straight in. Uh, okay. Ain't nothing to fuck with. I was like, hell yeah, this is my jam. Okay. Uh, Cream got me in a head bobbing groove for a mm -hmm. while because I knew that one method man the slow burning talk i was laughing my ass off i'm gonna spread your cheeks and tie it to the bedpost <laughs> take a hot iron and just <laughs> instantly yeah. brought me back to dave Chappelle skits sure uh, yeah good point protect your neck was a classic to me and tears i thought was okay but overall i was pretty happy to hear this album now okay i can start to be a little bit negative uh with you here in a minute but wu-tang forever did anything change for Hicks. 
Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I don't like protect, his shit. You wanted to protect your ears. <laughs> I thought, I don't like his shit. And I think I listened to this album. Uh, man, I switched over. I was, I was in the rap hip hop groove. You know, I started looking around a little bit and, and, you know, I think that this is honestly the first review that you and I did where we had minimal communication <clears throat> offline. I don't yeah, think we, just talk, we talked about completely opposite shit when we talked, we, we didn't really talk about the woo. And you know when which, which led me to believe that this would be a fun episode of Hicks being <laughs> yeah. like, "Fuck my ears, this sucks." <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, maybe that's because during the other episodes, I might throw you a a, a song. You know, just man, you got to listen to the song. What do you think of the song? Da 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 da. And I didn't do that this time. Oh no, I didn't get uh, one suggestion <laughs> of anything <laughs> woo from Axel on this one. Didn't get anything? <laughs> uh, you know, I listened to this album, and uh, you know, I I quickly switched over to some Biggie, big, humongous Biggie fan. Uh, um, transparency never really listened to Biggie much. Oh my God, he's he's probably my all time favorite. I would say Biggie is my all time favorite. And I, I have like a vo- I have a voice issue there. I I don't. Okay, I understand that. I, I have a voice issue that. there. I don't hate you for that. I like those hooks. I like those hooks. Right. Uh, so I I kind of switched over and tried to you know I went down a rabbit hole and kind of discovered the the artist that goes by the name Logic. Yeah, Logic. And I, Man. And I started shifting some of that your way, you know. Yeah, if good shit. If you're wooed out, if you're pooed out, then you know. But I wasn't. I was. <laughs> yeah, and I completely respect that. So album <laughs> number two, Wu Tang Forever. Um, man, it just didn't do anything for me. I had a hard time with it. Okay, and it's not because it's not because I didn't enjoy it. It's more about the double album aspect of this one. Like I got through probably seven or eight songs and I was like, man, I'm chugging right along. And I'm like, what yeah. do I got left? And I'm like, 23. What? The <laughs> fuck? Yeah. what? Yeah. And I was like, it's a double album. There's two intros on this bastard. Streaming music sucks for this reason. Sometimes mm-hmm. I had no idea. And I'm like, look at this. It's like, why is this album so damn long? And I'm like, okay, it's a double album. Uh, I'll go through some stuff. You can add thoughts if you want. <laughs> Since you're hating on the woo, <laughs> yeah. uh, woo revolution. I thought it was like kind of a weak opening, uh, reunited. I thought it was solid. And the girl on that song lay in the background, uh, vocals with, you know, Ooh, dang motherfuckers. I was like, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's I'm digging this. Okay. Uh, for heaven's sake was one of my jams off this album. Uh, cash still rules. I was like, eh, Visions, eh, as high as Wu-Tang get was solid. Severe punishment. The flow was awesome, in my opinion. I'll stop there for just a moment. But mm-hmm. the, the through the first six, seven songs, I was like, not as strong to me as the previous album. Okay. But I still have 104 songs to go on this album. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see where we get. Was, was there anything? Nothing on this album grabbed you either. No, sir, nothing. Goddamn. I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. be talking until something grabs you or until we get to some other rap. Yeah. Severe punishment. Like I said, flow's awesome. Over older gods was solid. Maria's okay. Uh, Better tomorrow was just okay. It's yours was solid. Then we got another intro. Uh-huh. Triumph had ODB on it. Anytime I heard ODB, because ODB is my favorite Wu-Tang member. Rest in peace, ODB. Sure. And I, and it is for generic reasons. I just love the way that he will, he doesn't give a shit what he sounds like when he's rapping. I agree. He doesn't that. care if his voice cracks. He doesn't care if the shit don't rhyme. Sure. He's just, he didn't, <laughs> yeah. he didn't give a damn. And it was yeah. so, he's so fun to listen to. It's like George Carlin with a mic in his hand rapping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I just, I enjoy the hell out of it. Impossible is okay. I'll just find what's good. Uh, little ghetto boys angry. And I dug that one a lot. Uh, besides that, the city violin, something I liked about the woo, a lot mm-hmm. of different genres mixed in with their music. There was violins, there was guitar, there was drums for the whole first, like 10 years of their album. 
that's one of the things I can take away from him. Mm-hmm. If I had to hear, I couldn't do it after a while. When they finally started using electronics, I was like, thank God. Yeah. If I hear one more boom, boom, to it, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to boom, boom to myself and go to sleep. Yeah. It was getting a little repetitive, but at the same time, I liked that they used the drums so heavily all the way through. Even when they had a- uh, access to electronic devices, they still went with the drums for a really long time. <laughs> the MGM, I thought, was a solid song. Dog shit cracked me up. If there's one thing I could suggest, even if you weren't feeling it, <laughs> listen to dog shit because it's just ODB ridiculously <clears throat> rapid about just the craziest shit. And I was I was <laughs> laughing my ass off, but I had the hardest time getting through this album because of it being so long and there was <laughs> so much filler on it. And there were so many songs that sounded... Uh, Here's the problem with me <laughs> loving the punk aspect of shit. Uh-huh. Punk sounds the same a lot. And sure. since this is my version of a punk rap group, so much shit sounded the same. So <laughs> many songs came up and I was like, this sounds just like the song I listened to three tracks ago. <laughs> and I'm, gonna, I'm cracking myself up here. Have you ever watched a movie where there's like a, uh, uh, someone like a spy being tortured and they're, they're like in a room tied to a chair with like Swedish death metal, black metal, <laughs> just blast. <laughs> I'll tell you what I watched this and I think, man, that wouldn't be torturous to me. You know, people are flipping out going crazy over this death metal or this black metal. I, you know what to call it. You know, I'd be like, what the hell is the big deal? But man, if this album was in a room, <laughs> this shit would be torturing me. I'd be like, I'm going to, I'm going to say it. I'm going to tell you my secrets. Turn that shit uh-huh. off. No. That reminds me. I don't know if you'll think of this right off the bat, but when you said death metal, and being tortured you're you you're, <laughs> you remember d snyder sure twisted sister i remember of d snyder yeah d snyder what was that movie called strange oh, land did never you ever see strange land that was heard. basically the equivalent of people being tortured to <laughs> kind of the yeah. same thing so that made me think of that yeah man so so there's no no Wu, just to clarify before moving on, no Wu-Tang albums caught you or no songs? Uh, not so far. Not so far. Okay. Well, we're, yeah. we're done with the second album. So the first album I thought was like, to me, kind of a, rel- a revelation mm-hmm. of like nine dudes saying, fuck it in front of a mic. And I just really enjoyed that. But I also get the aspect of where someone would be like, what the fuck is going on here? Thanks, Wu-Tang. This is going to be the biggest uh, F-bomb dropping episode I've done. (laughs) But the the second album, like there was a, if they would have condensed all the pretty solid songs into one album, this would have been an absolute banger, but it was too long. There was too much shit going on. And I just wasn't digging it like I was 36 chambers. Okay. Granted on the, uh, hello, Kim on the, what's up, Kim? Yeah. uh, (laughs) What's up, Kim on the, uh, ranking, so to speak, this second woo album is typically like regarded as their second best. And I just, I didn't really get that. I understand that it was true Wu Tang, but I just, I just thought they, they were a little too ambitious on that one. But then comes the W. The W. The W. I've got that this album was fire. I I this is my favorite Wu Tang album was number three. And there's gonna be some <laughs> generic reasons why. Yeah. But this was my favorite. Was this your favorite Hicks? I'm about half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> the this is probably my favorite album with one song that I liked. <laughs> oh shit, was it Gravel Pit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was, that was like their most commercially viable single Okay, was gravel pit. And if you didn't watch the music video for it, you definitely should. Cause there's dinosaurs and shit. They're like in a rock quarry back in prehistoric times. Man, don't tell me that shit because you're going to ruin it for me. Oh man, there's dinosaurs. 
there's like the 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 female backup singers wearing like the skittiest piece of like loincloth ever, and she's just like hooked in chains, but she's also going, I'm a gravel pit. Oh my no, god. No. I, I cracked 2000. up, dude. This is two thousand. Yeah. So yeah, this is like something from before two thousand. Crack, cracked me up, dude. But gravel pit's a jam. The gravel pit's a jam, but I tell you what, the rest of this album, <laughs> it sounded like a bunch of dudes talking shit. <laughs> Over a condensed microphone with a soccer over the microphone with an action movie playing in the background. That is that is somewhat true. See, and I I enjoy all the kung fu clips in between because <laughs> it's like you must die. This is the rule, this is the way. Yeah. And it's like and then they're like, motherfucker, motherfucker, you're gonna fucking die. And I'm like, Yes, yes, yes. and I'm like, I'm getting I, I believe that I'm going to die right now. <laughs> but but the I I respect that. Right. Intro, chamber music, <laughs> solid. Careful, solid. Hollow Bones, Kanye dug that. Kanye heard Hollow Bones and thought, Yeezy going to do something. <laughs> he heard Hollow Bones and thought, Yeezy going to do something. There, there was a lot of moments in, in uh, and this is, this is one of the things I liked about Wu-Tang too. There was a shit ton of times and moments where I was like, I know who heard this. And I, and I hear the influence and there was Kanye. I heard Kanye. There was definitely some Kanye, the, the, the childish, um, somebody taking a voice recording and adding that child level to it, like speeding it up, not to chipmunk level, but more to child level. Like <laughs> I was like, Kanye, Kanye stole that. Yeah. So Red Bull, that was red man on that track. Solid one blood. Yeah. Conditioner, ODB, Snoop, muffled mics. I was loving it. <laughs> it's like a sock over the mics. It was, yeah. there was a sock over the mic for sure in Conditioner. That was the worst one to me, but uh, a new version of Protect Your Neck, great. Uh, Let My with Nos on it, I dug it. I Can't Go to Sleep, eh. Do You Really? Fire. That song was banging. The Moment with Buster Rhymes. I love Buster Rhymes. Okay. That was that. that I was loving that gravel pit. My favorite song by them, even though it's their most commercially viable song. Okay. Gravel pit is just fun. Like this, the music in the background and each one of those guys, especially on the video, they are just throwing hands while they're rapping. They're they're The fire's still there on the W like they're still amped up, ready to go. That was my favorite album. And that is most definitely where I stopped getting excited. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting ready to go to Hicks level. <laughs> you can't get to Hicks level. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to stop you right there uh, for our one or two young listeners. Back in our time, there was a thing called uh, MTV Cribs. Do you remember MTV Cribs? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember like Red Man and somebody else? Red Man had his apartment and it was a That's shit apartment. hole. Do you remember how shitty that was? And well, it was when, awful. When I think Beth and was like asleep on the floor. Even. Yeah. When they knocked on the door, the screen door like fell off the hinges. And I thought, <laughs> I like these sons of bitches. Because they are keeping it real. They kept it real, I thought, real. I like that. Yeah. So, man, when when we started talking, we, that's the first thing that I I, I, I forgot now. about that. So I'm glad you brought that up because that was the best episode of Cribs ever. Oh, like yeah. he's stepping over people like here's the kitchen. <laughs> 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 yeah. He's like. Tommy's asleep. Let's just go over <laughs> here. And I'm like, man, this is, this is great. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely great. So yeah, this album, like I said, uh, I didn't dig it. Didn't, I don't know. It's okay. It's yeah. okay to not dig it. Eventually the roles are going to reverse and you're going to find something you love. And I'm going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, and, and that's the thing like Wu Tang you you were talking about wanting something to kick your ass. Yeah. This didn't kick my ass. Okay. Like I really enjoyed it, and I really re like I found like a uh, I I was able to relate to like the these guys' anger uh -huh. and the fact that they wanted to do it raw and not be <laughs> over polished. Like I related to it, and I loved it. But yeah. man, as soon as you get to album four, which was Iron Flag. Did that to me, the fire went away. They got more polished, like the 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 production quality got polished. 
and I still thought it was all okay. Like mm-hmm. I can still listen. I'm not really turning any of this off. Like the albums from here, I think there, there, there is a, a bit of a resurgence for me on one of these albums, but it wasn't iron flag. I thought it was okay. Like I was still digging it, but it lost so much. Like it just paled in comparison to the first three albums. Anything on Iron Flag that uh that, oh, that rocked man. your world, Hicks? I'll tell you what. Like the first twenty seconds of the song, <laughs> Uzi. Okay, thought, okay. This is my shit. We're coming back around. All and right. After like twenty seconds on second twenty one, I was like, I don't like his shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, you guys lost me. You had me, then you lost me. I thought this is it. This is my groove. Yeah, but it wasn't it. Uh, I I don't know if it was the song or not, but there was a lyric, uh, "Spill the drink on you, get the stink on you." <laughs> <laughs> so what the hell's the shit? <laughs> but, oh my there are some crazy ass lyrics on this whole There's thing. Crazy man. ass lyrics. There was one guy. There was one guy who was performing. He was rapping. And I don't know who it was, but I thought this guy is the, it wasn't method man. I could, yeah. I could figure out who method man when yeah. he was performing. I could figure out when ODB was performing. Oh yeah. Unmistakable. But there was one guy, I don't know who it was, but I thought, man, this dude needs to be out on his own. Well, they all did it. They all kind guys. of went out on their own. And I need to do some more research offline to figure out who this was. Cause I thought, man this guy would be so much better but i was not a fan of this album it did not do anything for me yeah it 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 didn't do anything for me either there's there's a handful of solids in here dashing uh the, the last track on the album i really dug that one uh otherwise it, it was just very like i just felt like this whole album was b-sides off the first three Okay. With a little extra polish, so I, I was not. This is when I got wooed out. Was was album four Iron Flag? I hadn't even heard of this album, so I'm not that surprised yeah. that I got wooed out. Yeah, but yeah, this uh, and I'm just gonna. Luckily, us laughing our ass off provides us 40 minutes of content. But yeah, Iron Flag and I eight diagrams. Same thing to me, I, but both of those albums just really let me the hell down. Like I was just really bummed out after the first three that they got more polished and that it all sounded like B sides from, from the W kind of is what it sounded like to me. So okay. iron flag and eight diagrams. I don't really have anything on eight diagrams except for, you know, there's a few solids in there and the rest is just okay. Again, I didn't dislike it. I just, the woo brought me through three albums that mm, I mostly enjoyed that, that double album really pissed me off. Yeah. It was solid, but it just way too long. Yeah. But that album four and five, I just couldn't, couldn't get into it at all. Not even a little bit. It, it was fine in the background because I enjoyed their style of rap. But like when you, when you listen to iron flag and eight diagrams like all i could think about was like man i really want to go back to the w or i really want to go back to 36 chambers like that that's not really a you know you're never going to listen to those albums again it's kind of like tom petty when we got to uh what the fuck was that album where the guy had the sickle in the field like you know whatever i didn't you know i want to go back to the album with i need to know on it so yeah yeah i had heard the best of the wu-tang clan and they followed it up with a couple albums after the third one that just fell completely flat for me here I am in Hicksland, not digging yeah. the woo. Finally, uh, I was still digging it. I just wasn't. It was just it paled in comparison. Sure, yeah, I understand. And man, I, I don't know. I I have so many other uh, rap and hip hop artists that I'm such a big fan of. And man, no disrespect, but I just was not. Not for you. I was not feeling it. Happens. It. it was just too much, you know, and it's, I'm going to go back to the hook thing. You know, by the time some hooks came around, uh, man, I thought they were weak, you know, yeah. it just wasn't, it wasn't my groove, you know, um, God just, you know, Chuck D Chuck D kicks my ass just strong and doesn't give a shit and powerful and rebellious and, 
you know, I'll tell you what, another good uh, artist, uh, Eric B and Rakeem. I don't know if you've ever listened to very many. Of them I have or a much little of bit, them. not a lot. Oh my God. Some of their <laughs> stuff. Uh, just a big fan. There are just so many people that I, it's like the reference point. Did you ever listen to three, six mafia? I've heard so many people talk about them. I've listened to so many podcasts. Yeah. People talking about them, but I don't know anything about them. Pretty good shit. Might be a deep dive eventually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's see, and that's thing too. Like I was happy to do Wu Tang and maybe that's why it hit me on those first three albums. Like there's just so much rap I haven't explored. Like with rock, it's all that nineties period with rap. Yeah. It's like 2000 and on. And I didn't really listen to much out of the nineties and eighties. So there, there was things I did, but, but yeah, yeah. I, was, I was happy to go back to a, a pretty heralded rap group from back then. And I, and I was pretty happy to do so, but my God, like I said, those last couple albums, number four and five couldn't, couldn't really dig it. What are you calling number four and number five? Just iron sure flag that. was four, eight diagrams gotcha. was five. That's what I say. Okay. Six was a better tomorrow. Sure. I didn't love this album, but uh-huh. I, I loved it in comparison to iron flag and eight diagrams. Like I, there was a whole lot like a ruckus in B minor. Love that song. Felt okay. like that a lot. 40th street slash. We will fight. Liked it a ton. Mistaken identity. Really liked it. Hold the heater. Yeah. Crusty goes. Yeah. Keep watch was okay. Miracle was. Yeah. Preacher's daughter. Solid. Uh, pioneer. The, the frontier. I, I think I may have wrote it down wrong. Just okay. Necklace. The next song. Okay. Ron O'Neill was just okay. A better tomorrow was. Yeah. The rest of the album was just okay, but the opening four songs drew me in more than anything that Iron Flag or Eight Diagrams could have. So a better tomorrow was a little bit of a rebound for me. I was like, okay, okay, okay I'm digging this Wu Tang album at least the first half of it, and then it it fell off back into what I would consider Wu Tang B sides uh, from their previous decent albums. It was better. It was okay. better. I was glad they were able to come at us with something better. And now a fun thing to point out uh-huh. is the seventh album. Technically. I'm not sure where I should use technically at actually the seventh album available to everyone was the saga continues. I didn't like this album at all. I'd rather listen to eight diagrams or, iron flag over and over before I listened to the saga continues. There was nothing on there that hit me. It was like you had this new polished 2017 sound. I think it came out in 2017, maybe. Okay. I, I just, and it just didn't fit who Wu Tang was to me. So this album, I would like to throw it out of the discography completely if I could, but I can't. But the fun thing about the seventh album is it really was the eighth. Cause me and you were talking earlier yeah. And, and Wu-Tang Clan decided to spend like six years recording. Uh, what was that called? Something Shaolin. Once upon a time. Once in upon Shaolin. a time in Shaolin. Mm-hmm. So they recorded this album. Yeah. And I was, didn't release it. I was, uh, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but no, I hit good. you up and I'm like, man, I can't find this album. And I'm looking at Wikipedia and under the sales figures column, there's one one sale and i'm like oh well is that uh method man's mom is she the only one that bought this album close you know i don't know so close. that's when i hit you up and i'm like i don't want to read a whole bunch of shit i just want to ask jeremy because he probably already knows and i'll and give I me did. the highlights and i did i yeah. even though i hadn't really listened to that much wu-tang I did know about the fabled album. I didn't remember what it was called, but I remember reading an article about it like maybe four or five years ago. So they make a, they make an album and what was it called again? Fucking alcohol is bad for you. Once upon a time. <laughs> and shall it. Yes. So this album they made, I don't know if everyone was on board or I assume they would have had to have been on board, but they made this album and wanted to release it as a work of art Mm -hmm. they wanted to release one copy of this album 
and sell it to one person. <laughs> and there was uh, exhibits for this album. You could go to art museums and listen to the album. Damn you. If you try to bring a recording device in, you were instantly put to death. Not really, but they kicked you out. There, there was no way for you to hear this album unless you went to a fancy schmancy art museum or an exhibit or a listening party and you could hear the album, but you couldn't take it home. One dude, some American CEO buys this album for e- Elon. $2 million. <laughs> he buys it for $2 million, and this dumbass gets arrested for security fraud gets all his possessions taken. So the FBI has, well, maybe not the FBI. I told you earlier, the feds, I just said the feds have possession of this album that nearly no one has ever heard. And that's just the way it is. It's in a lockbox somewhere uh, near the Avengers headquarters with shield. You know, and and if this shit was good, <laughs> if I do have done that. This might have been made more money. Yeah, it might have been the album that they're like Hicks will love this, it, this but he will have to buy it. <laughs> he will have to pay the price. I'm sorry for this did album. You, did you say how much you believe that this was sold for? The one it was the it was indeed sold for two million dollars. Two million dollars, which would the woo donated to charity, which is pretty cool. Yeah, most of it they donated most of it. I'm sure oh, they I, all I give went, that. They probably went to a strip club or two with the rest, <laughs> but I mean they, you know, because who wouldn't? Yeah, I mean I've been. And I shouldn't talk about how many strip clubs I've been to. I lived in Vegas for a minute, but yeah. you know they they donated most of it. So yeah. <clears throat> that dude gets basically arrested all his possessions taken don't know when we can hear that album the rizza made a uh some kind of legal declaration that it can't be listened to till 2102 2102 that he wanted it to be like a discovery later in life that people are like we finally get the wu-tang album we've never heard by then music <laughs> won't even sound like music but shoot it into space on a tesla that's right. Shoot it into space, you know, some kind of space X machine. Yeah. But yeah, the saga continues actually ended up being the seventh album. I just didn't, I had a really hard time with it. I kind of hope the Wu-Tang clan does not release another album unless they're going to go raw and throw some fucking socks over the mic again. Uh, just, <laughs> but man, those first three albums opened my eyes a little bit to the Wu Tang Clan. Okay, I knew I liked them because I knew I liked some songs. But uh, but yeah, those first three albums, I was digging it pretty, pretty intently. I I think most uh, like like I've said about most of the bands we've reviewed, there's albums that I definitely will go back to. Mm, the yeah. album, the W, I will probably listen to some more. Yeah. And a little update from the last episode. I have still been listening to Sabotage by Black Sabbath. Good. I really really love that album. So Good. so I have gotten something from pretty much every episode. And from this one, I get the W, which I think will enter my rotation when I'm in the mood for a rap. It's just like, fucking, what's wrong with that motherfucker? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm, no, I'm, saying, I'm very thankful that I gave them an opportunity, but I will not be... I, you know, <laughs> unless you throw something at me and, be like, and, and uh, you know, I respect uh, your musical taste. You and, might, and I yours. I, that's just that. And, and you might say, man, you really need to go back and revisit this. No, I no. would do it. I would do no. it because See, I might I, be missing something. I don't think you are. I, I, I think, uh, you know, the great thing about music is to me, those rare bands, like there are bands that can work on you if you give them a chance. Mm-hmm. Tool kind of is one of those bands. Like if you're not a Tool fan and you listen to Tool, God, I'm sick about how much I mention them. But no, don't. Some, do sometimes people listen to them and it seeps in and they start to understand. Yeah. To me, the Wu Tang Clan is like if you don't get it, you you don't get it. Yeah. And I and I I I, I honestly think that I barely got it. Okay. I, I think they got me with the raw sound. I think they got me with uh, the anger on the first couple albums because those dudes were pissed off. Like if you watch the video for uh, Protect Your Neck, uh-huh. they're just standing 
over somewhere by a fucking shitty building and they're just fucking preaching at you with their lyrics and i'm just getting hit with it and i'm like yeah these guys are fucking mad yeah. and i was like i'm digging this yeah and you know and it's just one of those things like it hits you or it doesn't like i'm yeah. trying to think of uh i'm trying to think of one of those ultra pop dave matthews band for yeah. some reason everyone i know fucking loves dave matthews <laughs> i think dave matthews sucks big fucking jug of <laughs> shit I like, can't stand I just, him. I can't stand him. And I yeah. like him. Like I've yeah. seen him acting in certain things. And I'm like, man, he's a really solid actor for being someone who can't sing worth a lick. I do not like their music. I hate Dave Matthews band. Like yeah. I just, I, oh, I hate him so bad. I can't stand him. And even still, even though I say that before you, Dave Matthews haters get all like, this show sucks. You bunch of racists. <laughs> like racist. <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah. It's Dave Matthews Band. Yeah. Dave Matthews Band did do a DVD. I think it was called like For Your Ears Only or Listeners Only. I don't even remember. But I watched a live DVD and it was pretty good. Love but it. listening to a studio album, I'd rather punch myself in the nuts. I just, uh, Dave Matthews sucks. But that's, that's just one of those things. I don't like it. Everyone else seems to. Uh, that happens. It just happens. That Sometimes happens. something doesn't resonate with you at all. There's so much music out there. You know, it's uh it's your personal taste. If yeah. you like it, you like it. If you don't, yeah. you don't. I don't like I said earlier, I don't hate somebody because they disagree with me. I completely right. respect their decision. That's the way it should be. <laughs> that's I mean, that's that's just the way it should be. Like 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 we said last week, I, I don't care how good the music is. If I hear someone sounding like a big old fucking bag of winger, I'm off. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just, no, I can't. <laughs> I just can't do it. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's going to be stuff like that for everybody. So I'll tell you the one positive thing I walked away with was listening to the, listening to Wu Tang. It inspired me to go back and revisit a lot of artists, uh, in the rap genre that I haven't listened to in a long time. I went through all three easy E albums just because I need to listen to some shit that, you know, you like from that. that I know that I like that. I don't want to, that I want to get this, get away from this shit. Yeah. And I'm sorry for saying shit, get away from this music because I'm not enjoying it. Ah, see that's thing. That's thing on this podcast and every podcast produced. Neither one of us are, are righties. I mean, not, not to get political, sure. but I, I lean left. I believe you lean left as well. Sure. We're not trying to cancel ourselves, but God damn it. If I want to say something sucks, I'm going to say it sucks. Say it, man. You know, it, it just, I, I don't, I don't want to be super nice about everything. Like Ronnie James Dio took a piece of my soul from me last week. <laughs> yeah, <they're tough. laughs> he took a part of me that I can't get back. You know, I wrote down one note a while back listening to Wu-Tang. I was like on album number two. I'm like, these these guys are like the limp biscuit of rap. <laughs> <laughs> and I scratched that out and I thought I better not say it, but now I've been drinking and I'm like, I'm going to say it. So, <laughs> so. Wouldn't that be great if ODB like, man, we're going to break some shit tonight. I'll tell you what. Yes, no. I hate Dave Matthews. Uh, yeah. Blues, Brian Spriggs said, you hate Dave Matthews? Yes, I hate Dave Matthews. He says, what about Blues Traveler? I love Blues Traveler. Man, yeah, I do too. I love Blues Traveler. And it's the, uh, the, the song Hook is one of my favorite songs okay. of all time. Man, the vest with the harmonicas in each different key. John Just Popper was a out. badass. We're the talking th about the late 90s whenever you had to look good to be on MTV. That motherfucker walked out like, I just had four fucking meatball subs and, and I'm play the harmonica. Speaking of Blues Traveler, I listened to, uh, I didn't listen. I watched a documentary about those cats a long time ago. And he's like, you know, my bandmates are like, you know, one's doing Coke, one's doing marijuana. <laughs> he's like, I'm doing Kentucky Fried Chicken. He said, I can smell that shit from 17 miles away. I'm like, I bus driver. It pull over and I'm uh, like, I love some kfc too son uh, it's so that's good yeah which that's, you know i don't know what happened to those dudes but it's he, uh, he lost a bunch of weight whenever him. they were at the tail end of their career but i don't know i don't know if he switched to impossible chicken or what but 
I mean, but uh, dude, I loved, I love Blues Traveler. I haven't listened to their whole discography, but man, every time a Blues Traveler song comes on, I'm like, motherfucker, hand me a feather boa and a harmonica. You I remember just, the, you remember the Spin Doctors? Yes, <laughs> I've got a CD in my car right now, <laughs> right now. Yeah, oh it's my, my wife, but I got I it. The, oh, don't be blaming that shit on your wife. No. <laughs> I'll never forget that dude rolling around on a music video. I'm like, who the hell's this clown? I'll never forget the spin doctors. But yeah, anyway, yeah. That's a uh, give that's a funny. few final thoughts on the woo, and we'll talk about other music for a few minutes while I grab sure. a beer. Give us sure. some more. Give us something more. Uh, it doesn't even matter what you can talk about. How you hated them more? You can talk about which ones you liked, which ones you didn't, what you didn't understand. Give me 10 seconds of talk to grab a beer. Sure. Go get that beer, Jay Barker. Yeah. So like I said earlier, you know, uh, I didn't hate listening to these guys. Man, I just, I maybe if they had a little bit more guidance, you know, just a little bit more guidance, a little bit more of, uh, maybe they had the right producers, sound engineers. I don't know. It's just, uh, they got them later. I mean, they got the sound engineers later, but yeah, I don't know. They, they, they went raw. I, I don't know. I, I, I just think that's what they wanted to come in sounding like. I'm, I think, and that, that's just something that hit me initially was I, these guys don't want to sound polished. They, they want to yeah. sound about as natural and genuine as, as they can. And, and that faded, but not for ODB. I'm a fucker still can't. I mean, he just, it sounds like a, a fucking 50 year smoker getting on the mic. Like, oh, yeah, y'all, y'all. Like, yeah. He's I, like 19. Yeah. He's yeah. Like 19 at the time. I hate that he's gone. Like, I, you yeah. know, that, that solo album of his was so much fun. Did you listen to that when it came out? No, but I will. That's the only thing I would tell you to go back on is listen to uh, Old Dirty Bastards solo album. I, I think it was his second. The first one was called Back to the 36 Chambers or something like that. The second one was called something please and it's i say something i know what it's called but i'm not going to say it because i'm you know I, I don't have the i should not say that so would you care to carry on for like uh 28 seconds while i go take a piss not at all i'll be right back not at all so brian spriggs says spin doctors turn your man card in i honestly can't remember what the spin doctors even sang but again my wrap up on the wu-tang clan was I, I saw what they brought into rap in the early nineties. And I, for one appreciated it while he's gone. Hicks crabby pasty ass. Didn't like it, but that's okay. That's okay. We can't like everything. Uh, as far as some of the rappers go as a part of the Wu-Tang clan inspect a deck, I thought was really good. Raekwon, I thought was exceptionally good. Method Man was great, but I think we all know that. You God was pretty solid. ODB was my favorite out of the Wu Tang Clan, of course, because he made me fucking laugh. Uh, Ghostface Killer had that old school hardcore voice. I dug that a lot. And of course, the RZA is great. The RZA is literally a genius when it comes to this kind of music. And in general, he's just a smart, smart dude. So I really enjoyed the RZA. And I thought the Jizza was really good multiple <laughs> times. Here's something I want to say about the Wu-Tang Clan that I enjoyed a lot. Multiple times, I just kind of went through the members a little bit of who I really liked and who I thought was just solid or, you know, not yeah. or this or that. But multiple times heard. I heard this phrase at least two times, maybe three. The words without a condom on. I was like... Dude, I keep hearing them rapping about without a condom on it. I'm like, this, this like has to be an inside joke or just fun or just fun talking about, you know, doing it without a condom on. And that made me respect them more because you say Wu-Tang sucks. I say condoms suck. <laughs> condoms <laughs> suck. So without a condom on, more power to you. What should we do next week? To anyone still listening, chime in. To anyone who listens after the fact, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us wherever. I'll put the links in the description of this podcast. But what? where the hell do we go from here? We have a whole list of bands. But I don't know if I'm ready to go back to rock yet. I don't know 
if I'm ready to go into a different direction genre wise, I don't know what to do, but I, but I know I don't want to go back to the sixties or seventies quite yet. I'm just not there, but I also don't want to go. I don't, I don't want to go to the same time period of rap either. Brian Spiggs, Brian Spriggs says go country for a week. That is extremely hard for me. I'll tell you what. Extremely uh, hard. I don't know if I can do it. Um, what country? Yeah, I don't either. I, I just i i I know my re. I, I don't see any country artist that that I'm going to come on this podcast and be like, bro, fuck it. My my third eye was just unlocked. It's going to be some outlaw shit. Um, That's the only thing I can handle. I tell you what, um, as far as country, if I was forced to listen to anything, um, it's going to be a little bit of Waylon Jennings. I mean, it's going to be back late 70s outlaw shit. Me too, and I think I've heard the most part of it. So I hate to do something. I am not doing David Allen (laughs) Coe. No fucking way. No fucking way. Not a chance. Yeah, I think that's I, that, 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 that's that that shit's too racist for me. And um, there's, there's some of that. I tell you what, if you go deep into David Allen Co., I mean, there's some. It's pretty controversial stuff. I, I just, yeah, I can't. I just can't. That's just too. You know, I, I can handle pushing the envelope, but I can't handle just blatant racism. I I have no room in my life for that shit. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. Uh, you know, if we were to go back into rock, there's queen and David Bowie and uh, countless others. If we went into rap, um, I mean, there's some of the, some of the groups that we mentioned before, uh, y- you know, what was a good suggestion by my wife actually. What's that? And I've heard, uh, I've heard the singles, but Huey Lewis in the news, <laughs> <laughs> Got to get back. Not in saying time. we need to. Not saying we need to do that. Got to get back in time. You know, not so saying funny. we have to do that, but <laughs> but I mean that's. I need to add that to the list because she suggested it, and I know that I do like the singles from Huey Lewis. That's and so News. crazy that you just mentioned that because Huey Lewis just popped up on my feed not too long ago. What? It was like yesterday. How yeah. the hell? And I'm like, that dude has the Ringo Starr syndrome. He looks like he's 43 years old. He I looks know. good. Yeah, he looks good. Oh when you sing God. about happy shit and have an album called Sports, that's what you look like. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, every song of his was like, New York, New York, going down to LA, going to listen to Wu-Tang. I'm like, <laughs> like how do yeah. you age when you're that goddamn happy? Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. So, it was crazy. So that's a fun one. I'm I'm not afraid to go 80s as long as it's 80s that I know I like. And she's like, "You like Huey Lewis in the news?" I was like, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> she's like, um, "You like Huey Lewis?" <laughs> you didn't even have to convince me. I was all yeah. about it. We were taking a ride the other day because that's what fucking full blown adults do. Their leisure time <laughs> is going for a little ride around yeah. Buckeye Furnace, yeah. and uh, and yeah, we man, I need to find that we. I had her send me names of uh, groups to add to the list. And of course we talk so damn much that they're probably buried in my, in my uh, conversation, but Huey Lewis and news is, is definitely one of them. We may not decide today what we do on the next one, but it's yeah. coming. I'm like you, you know, ideas? we were kind of hitting the, it seems like we were stuck and kind of or hovering around like the, the seventies ish rock and roll. I was kind of, I don't want to say I was growing tired of it. You know, I, I was, I snuck in a little bit of, there wasn't so much, I don't know what year queen was. I snuck in a little bit of queen, hoping that we would hit queen up next. Uh, I was trying to do a little bit of homework up front. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to go back to queen. I definitely yeah, I don't want to, think I am either. I want to visit queen. Um, while, while we're kind of in this groove, um, with the rap hip hop, I'd kind of like to do another rap hip hop artist. I think I'm, I think I'm leaning that way. Yeah. But I just don't of, know where to go. I don't either. I don't, I don't know where to go from here. That's out of our generation. 
Right. And there's a shitload of ways we could go. So by all means, don't believe we're running out of ideas. We're not, we're right. just not ready to go back to rock yet. So man, when the fuck did I take that ride and have her send me shit to put down on my list? I'll figure right, it yeah. out. But yeah. who else was influential in the early rap game? We both know our fair share of public enemy. Probably both know our fair share of LL cool J uh, I don't think I could do the Fresh Prince or DJ Jazzy Jeff. I think that's just a little too lighthearted for my liking. Right. I understand that. So, yeah, I'm not sure. It might be. Uh, maybe maybe we, we go in this direction. Uh, maybe we listen to a couple songs from different artists, like check out a 3-6 Mafia song. Uh, check out your <laughs> Master P. <laughs> Make, make him say, him say uh, uh. Make him say uh. I actually speaking of go ahead, go ahead and I'll follow it up because I have a feeling no. going in the same direction. Speaking of Master P, which takes me back to the MTV Cribs. Yeah. Master P with the golden yep. toilet. He does have the golden he did have the golden toilet. I don't know if he still has the golden toilet. The gold toilet. I'd say he probably has a porcelain toilet by now. Probably so. The, the make him say uh. Yep. A little, little known fact. I hope no one associated with him listens to this, but I don't believe it was actually true. I'm not going to say his name. I had a buddy back in the day. One of the, one of the first apartments I ever got when I was like 20, 19, 20, something like that. A dude I had as a roommate. He was kind of a habitual liar, sort of, or at least I think maybe not. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but a buddy of mine, Claimed he was the first white no limit model for no limit records. Like he wore the no, no limit. Mash P had a, a clothing line back then. Okay. I'm seeing Full basketball jerseys. I'm thinking my, my it might have been, might have been some, but I think there was like track suits, like the Adidas style track shoot okay. suits and shit like that. Okay. But he claimed, and this dude's from Colton, Ohio, and he claimed he was the first no limit model that was not of color. And he had, and, and he used that as a reason as to why he had every fucking album from no limit silk, the shocker fucking master P the guy that sang back that ass up. I can't even remember his name, but like yeah, all juvenile. these juvenile, all these juvenile. no limit soldiers. And he had all of them. And I, and I, I got on a little no limit kick there for a minute, for a yeah. minute. I just don't know if they're relevant enough to, Master P probably would be relevant enough to throw in there, but I don't know. I just don't know. There's probably better artists we could do. So, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we'll listen to a little a, a couple tracks of Three Six Mafia. Uh, there was one guy I can't remember his name, but it was like something the devil, like R Rashawn the devil or Wu Tang the devil. Wu Tang the devil. <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to look up some. We're just gonna have to do a little bit of history on the uh, maybe the the late nineties, early two thousands rap or something. You remember yep. Mace? Oh yeah. That was P, P. Diddy and Mace and, uh, Mace went, uh, Mace was kind of in the groove. And then he said, yeah, he had a big, this huge guy. album. I'm going to college. I'm going yeah. Back to college fellas. Yeah. Then I Mace, think it was called something out, world or something. Mace world. Or, I don't know. Speaking of Mace, which makes me think of puff daddy, which makes me think of, biggie oh my gosh i went back and listened to a little bit of biggie there's so much puff daddy in those songs yeah just a little off rhythm yeah yeah that's right yep. like, why don't you shut the hell up i know Dude, it's, so, their job. it's crazy how many of those guys were just bit players like kanye produced before he rapped yeah. like he was like before he started rapping like he was he was like uh the butch vig who ended up being in the band sure. garbage, you know, sure, like yeah. he was that guy for the rap world. And then he's like, fuck it. I'll make an album myself. And it's like, God damn, you know, cause Kanye say what you will about him. Dude's a beast. Did you ever listen to that? Watch the throne album of his and Jay Z's. I don't, I'm not really familiar with that, but as soon as Kanye, Kanye's first album hit the shelves, that was my shit. Yeah, thought, dude. Oh my gosh, this shit is so good. And I you, still you I could go back and listen to that album. You, you know, the very gotta first. listen to the the Watch the Throne album because it's just Kanye and Jay-Z. 
Okay. But all literally all the beats, all the rhythms, like it's got Kanye written all over it. So it's basically a Kanye album where he splits time with Jay Z as yeah. far as the vocals go. Yeah. And it's just, it, it is one of the best albums of okay. all time, in my opinion. It's that okay. damn good. The Jay Z memes just throw me off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So See, I, and I'm not even that big of a Jay Z fan. Like, I, you know, yeah. I, I never really got into him, but that album. Okay. With Jay Z being influenced by Kanye's beats. Yeah. Fucking phenomenal. And it's oh, not yeah. like Kanye makes the whole album. Like, they both make the album. They both just make that album just one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. Like, good. You know, it's fantastic. I'm not familiar with that, but I so will good. be soon. Yep, just look up Watch the Throne. Uh great album. But yeah, let's uh we don't have an answer for you guys now, but as as usual, since Bobby we started Brown. this. Who? Bobby, Bobby Brown. Brown. Fuck I'm me joking. running. I'm Fuck joking. me running. There is a new Tina Turner movie coming out. Or wait. Is Bobby is Brown? Tina? No different. The Bobby Brown was Whitney's dude, Ike Turner. <laughs> or did Bobby Fuck, I don't know. Don't know where I was going with that. But That's but yeah. Right. Yeah, no, no thanks on Bobby Brown. I was joking. Hard pass. I know you were hard yeah. pass there. I'd rather do Britney Spears. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll figure out what we're gonna do by Monday and we'll post it that way. Anybody that wants to listen and follow along, uh, you can. Sure. But we're we're gonna look for some other rap. Please, by all means, post some suggestions on our Facebook page or our Twitter page or even Instagram. We're there too. Uh, if you just put in some form of uh stuck in my generation wording, you'll probably find us. Yeah. But yeah. We'll, we'll figure something out, but we know next week is a little more hip hop just because we need a, an extended break from rock. If somebody wants us to listen to jazz, by all means suggest something worth listening to. I'll get down with some jazz. Uh, probably not actually, but if somebody can make a compelling enough case country, I just can't do it. I agree. I can't do it. Like if, if I think of my favorite country artists, which are Cash and Waylon and Conway Twitty, oddly enough, uh, yeah. you know, I like them, but the Dolly I, Parton, Dolly Parton, one of the best human beings alive. I love her. I love her too. My wife adores her. Sure. Uh, but, but I just, I just can't think of any country music that I actually want to listen to or that I even care to give a chance because I know myself too well. And I just know that I won't dig it very sure. much. So sure. even my favorite country doesn't hit me real hard. It's just like tolerable to me. So we'll see. Sure. Next week, a little more hip hop to come. We could use your help. Give us some more names. We'll figure something out. We'll announce it Monday, but hopefully you enjoyed my slight love of the woo and Hicks's total not like of the woo. Got to be honest, man. We I'll can't come honest. on here and blow smoke up everyone's ass and say, you know, I think they're great, but I didn't really like any album. <laughs> they're wonderful artists, but I, yeah. I just wasn't feeling any album. What kind of lie is that? What kind of bullshit is that if we did that? It's just yeah. not the way to be. And I'm going to ask you, just out of curiosity, your wife seems to have pretty good taste in music. What did your wife, what were her comments or opinions regarding this week's subject matter. Honestly, my sister-in-law, Amanda, sure. is probably more of a Wu-Tang fan okay. than my wife. I don't think my wife knows any Wu-Tang. Maybe, okay. maybe a song or two. But my sister-in-law, on the other hand, has a group on Facebook. Uh, it's not serious, but now I have to look it up. Okay, This dates back... This dates back every bit of 10 years, but my sister-in-law made a group on Facebook called the Wu-Tang Love and Peace Corps. Really? Yep. And, and there I is the... I don't mean any disrespect. No, no, no. And, and I, I really don't think it has much to do with actual Wu-Tang. Actually, there hasn't been a post in it since 2016 until i posted on it for christmas throwing up the woo sign by my christmas tree <laughs> yeah yeah okay uh, that was the last time and, and basically all the group was was just for the opportune times to throw up the wu-tang side i had not little to do with music little to do with anything it was really based around the Chappelle years 
actually, this is my sister-in-law's son. And oh, he's yeah. very little and he's throwing up yeah. the Wu-Tang sign. Like yeah, that's cool. it was just literally about situations where it could be like Wu-Tang. Sure. Yeah. Really all it was about. Just, just, yeah. uh, just a nice little group, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. My wife does, is not like my wife is kind of, uh, she's a big fan of the chronic of Dr. Dre's. She loved yes. the Marshall Mathers LP. Yes. Um, she loved some of the old school rap. Some of that holds a, a special place in her heart. Sure. She loved Tupac. Who doesn't love Tupac? Yeah. Or do you not love Tupac? Man, I'm more team B.I.G. See, I like Tupac. I was big yeah. into Tupac back in, I... back in the day. Not not super big, but but I was fairly big. I like I enjoyed every album. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she she was into that kind of stuff. Man, she's just such a such a 70s <laughs> chick she's just so into the classic sure. rock sure and that's great so, and you know i'm my wife asked me she said you know who are you guys discussing this week and i was like wu-tang i was like that shit sucks <laughs> <laughs> she's like, wu-tang sucks <laughs> she's not like, for me not for like, me but she's like you better be careful because there are a lot of wu-tang fans out there Listen, uh, like, Wu Tang fans aren't going to do anything to you that K-pop fans haven't threatened to do to me. Oh, and I was telling my my fifteen year old son about the. He's like, those K-pop fans don't fuck around. Well, no, they don't. I got death threats in my email. <laughs> like I, you know, K-pop. No, especially Blackpink, which is apparently the biggest K-pop group around. Yeah, and, and that's what we reacted to on the YouTube channel, and we we thought it was terrible, and we said it was terrible, and the next thing you know, we're just the biggest racist, fat, overblown, diabetic <laughs> fucks on the planet. Yeah, my son was like, "Those fans will creep up on your house at three a.m. and kill your fucking dog." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I believe it. Luckily, I don't think they're going to drive all the way to Ohio <laughs> from wherever the fans are. <laughs> Because there ain't a goddamn K-pop fan here in Jackson, Ohio. I say K-pop, and people's like, "Is that the kind of soda you get at Kroger's?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, it's it's music." Yeah. Uh, anyways, we'll 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 uh, we'll bring you some more stuck in my generation next week. I don't know what it's going to be. Help us out. Don't come down on us too hard for not one thousand percent loving the woo especially hicks don't don't uh don't hurt him he lives in wellston on pennsylvania avenue but don't don't hurt him over there that's you know? right that's don't right. hurt him hammer don't hurt him maybe we do mc <laughs> hammer next week <laughs> oh shit all right that's that's all we got we'll uh we'll hit you up monday on social media with who is next we'll see you next time wu-tang you don't have the right to throw the fucking hands up hicks Thank you for listening to Stuck in My Generation. Again, if you want to suggest bands for us to listen to, send it over to stuckinmygeneration at gmail.com. Just so much.